Okay, Conrad, this way. Let's go. Good luck, Conrad. Welcome to true old school Call of Duty. Before we ever got the incredibly high stakes in Hollywood campaigns, we had more authentic stories within the classic Call of Duties. When the story focused more on the war setting and didn't make one or a few soldiers the hero of the story, instead you were amongst thousands of heroes who put their lives on the line to stop the Axis powers. These games get lost behind the fame that came after the release of Modern Warfare, often known as the ones that came before the success. But is that what we should really be labeling these classics? Welcome to basic training, comrades. If you wish to survive, you will do exactly as I say. Now, walk over to that table and pick up those weapons. There's a level of nostalgia in plenty of older war games that have yet to be replicated in today's climate. The sense of taking on some of the biggest battles in history with that heroic feel attached to it. Not really knowing any of these characters, but being able to see their role in conquering our shared objective is quite poetic. What really ties it all together is the instant immersion from the war music. Call of Duty before it adopted the formula that has been relevant since 2007 had made some of those World War II themed games. The ones where it was about the events of what generations before us had to go through. There was an influx of anything about the war in movies, books, and video games that it cemented itself as a special era that we will most likely never see again in such a high demand. Branding games such as Call of Duty's 1-3 through 3 classics. For this video specifically, I will be exploring mostly the beloved Call of Duty 2 as it was the pinnacle of the bunch. It was a big hit, it did better than Call of Duty 1, and it wasn't the backstepping that Call of Duty 3 would do. It was the perfect mix from the three perspectives we get to experience, the Americans, the British, and the Russians. It goes in chronological order, starting from the Russian side, to the British, to then the Americans with some of it overlapping, spanning across the years 1941 to 1945. You learn very quickly that Russia is not in the best situation. They have troops constantly being replaced and sent out as they were trying to throw numbers at the Germans. They lost over 20 million lives in the span of 6 years. So yeah, they were sending out new guys all the time. We step into the shoes of Private Vasily, a guy who hated the German army for killing several of his family members. The atmosphere building is incredibly well done here. Every single mission I felt immersed in the battle. It felt simple, yet really powerful with subtle details. Such as in this one mission where you hear the intercom of most likely a German officer. Comrades of the Soviet Union, are you hungry? Are you cold? Are you tired? Hot food, warm dry clothing, proper medical treatment, and a safe place to sleep await you at the nearest German field hospital. Our well-disciplined troops are under the strictest orders to accept all Soviet comrades who honorably surrender. But there's also the detail of including Russian women fighting in the war. 
as countless men were lost, Russia opened up more options for women to get involved in the war. They would go on to prove valuable in the war effort with some becoming deadly snipers, tank crew, and even pilots. So to know there were authentic details like this being included, you can't help but appreciate the effort going into research. On any random night, as a child playing through these perspectives, they were eye-opening. It reminds me that video games have the opportunity to educate the player while bringing forth an enjoyable experience. Seeing war quotes after death would always hit different. After losing a fight, rather than be frustrated with the reason I died, it gave me a chance to be welcomed with this somber feeling of reading a memorable quote. Even if it's one I've seen dozens of times already, there's just something very calming about it. You hear that Norman has been sent home? Lucky bastard! That lucky bastard's lost his leg! Well, at least he's out of this bleeding desert! Jumping to control of John Davis, and David Welsh of the British Perspective, we see a drastic change in our fighting environment. No more bleak winter, and instead, welcome to the hot desert. It's here I realize how well seeing through the eyes of different soldiers of different armies works so well. The war created many stories with different hardships. Going from being more scrappy and defending your own land, to then being in a tank division mostly clearing out occupied Africa. It's important for any game to have variety in their design, and we see exactly that in the several acts we play through. This is also the time we get introduced to the Price family, but he's not the forefront of the story. He's there, he's a main character, he's definitely a Chad, but he's never taking over too much. The story of the game is still driven by the events of the war and is controlled by that. Our actions our characters do are only a small part in a much bigger picture. You could realistically jump into anyone else's perspective and have a similar storyline just under a cast of other personalities. And that's the beauty of being a part of something much bigger than the characters. Under heavy fire! Use that tank for cover! Coming in from the north! Take out those jerrys! As I finish a chapter, I'm rewarded with the simplest of outros, feeling the progress of war and achieving victory but also taking in the long journey along the way. Being educated with little bits of historical information complemented with that outro music to each completed chapter. It's a conclusion to what we just did, giving us a moment to breathe and realize how far we have come. But it's not over yet. We've seen many different battles portrayed from the Americans in all forms of media. Almost everyone knows about D-Day on June 6, 1944, the commencement of Operation Overlord, the plan to invade Western Europe. We've seen this battle played out many times, 
but in Call of Duty 2's version, we get to take Point to Hawk as a ranger, who are an elite unit assigned to some of the most difficult missions, which makes them the perfect unit to scale the cliffs. We're now in the battlefield as Corporal Bill Taylor, mostly fighting alongside Sergeant Randall, who I think Lieutenant Turner's character was inspired by. From this perspective, we fought through D-Day to Hill 400 to where things wrap up after taking the Rhine. Since this video is about the classic appeal of these Call of Duty games, let's take a deeper look at one of the missions. Dog Company, listen up. We're the only ones left. Everyone else is either dead or wounded. Battalion has promised to relieve us soon, but I wouldn't hold my breath until we get some- German counter attack! Counter attack! After going through the mud of taking Hill 400, you are now tasked with defending this monstrosity of a position. One important note is that the Germans will attack from everywhere. One of my favorite things to dissect from a mission is our surroundings, just looking around and taking in the details. Your unit was given a tough assignment after already having a very tough one suffering many casualties. This shows from the amount of wounded Americans we see scattered inside the bunker, and right outside of it is where the entire mission will play out. Taking out dozens of Germans, their mortar crews, tanks, and surviving the relentless artillery. It's chaos up here. But it's not just this mission. Every mission has something to it, and they all deserve to be credited. The only real way to absorb it all is to play it. Go experience it for yourselves. You can find that in several different entries they had. Big Red One, Finest Hour, Call of Duty 3 even. It's more expansive than some may remember. Of course the franchise is on to bigger things and made strides that are overall much better, for the most part. But with each era, there will always be something distinct. Something of value that will only be held to that period of time. Because of that, it gives reason for older games like the original Call of Duties to be special and have something that no other era of Call of Duty will ever have. <laughs>